Jean-Marc, can you explain about a little bit about the history of uh, Brasserie Timmons uh, in the past? Uh, sure. So yeah, we're we're standing here uh, in one of the uh, historical buildings of the brewery. There were three actually originally. This is the smallest one, um, and uh, well, uh, the brewery actually originally started in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. In uh, in fact, it started with uh, my great grandfather, um, who uh, was basically um, found, uh, well, encountered a. Um, the daughter, the single daughter of a beer merchant here in Jet. Uh, and uh, he was a brewer from Molenbeek. Um, and of course, with his father-in-law, who was a beer merchant, they quickly decided to kind of set up a brewing business here in Jet. Okay. Uh, they built a very big uh, brewing, uh, like beer warehouse where they could store barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, beer merchants at that time were actually uh, selling beer, but also uh, kind of doing some blending. So of they course. had a very big uh, uh, beer warehouse and then in 1911 they built a brew house across the street so it's around the corner from here mm -hmm. um, and that uh, lasted with uh, my great-grandfather and my grandfather until 1970. Okay. Uh, so around that time as we know a lot of Brussels breweries and Belgian breweries were kind of closing down business was difficult um, and uh, well a few years ago um, with my brothers was five of five brothers with me and six now uh, uh, so six in total we inherited this building and very quickly we were like well this is a building that's not been renovated since the 1950s um, well we have an op awesome opportunity here to kind of start to revive the brewery Great. Uh, and we decided okay the six of us would, would really go ahead and go do that and so we're standing here in the new brew house that's been open since 2020 2020 ah, uh, before the pandemic situation so so the planning has been going on for quite a while. In mm. fact, we, we started uh, home brewing as kind of like a feasibility kind of uh, step uh, in 2015, 16. Um, and then we, we decided to go ahead in 2018, but it took a while to get the permits and then to do the works. Uh, so we have now everything in order and very slowly we're kind of getting production ongoing. Um, and uh, yeah, so. And, and, and Jean Marc, a question. Uh, in 20 and 2015, when you was a home brewer, when we was, you started to do some home brewing, yeah, you, you already have in that mind in that at that time that you want to reopen the Brasserie Timmons. Well, we had the idea was we're going to reopen the brewery, ah. but we don't want to kind of like improvise. We want to know more or less what we're doing, so we decided to have a home brewing step. Great. We called it the Tamens Brew Project. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's still some vestiges of this on Untapped. You can see a few beers of that kind of like that have been mentioned, but that's the brew project, which is a home brew project. Okay, okay. Yeah. And Jean Marc, uh, at the time in the early 90s, uh, when the brewery was open and when the brewery started to make beer, at the time they produced lambics. Yeah, so my great grandfather and my grandfather were producing exclusively lambic. Because it uh, was the beer in, in that time, was the beer uh, yeah. for the region, right? Exactly. That was the like number one beer. Uh, it was Lambic and then the derived beers, uh, Goes and Creek. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the brew house was quite substantial because it was uh, um, 120 hecto mm. uh, brew house, like a uh, cool ship. So the cool ship was, was uh, the production was about 120 hecto Very important. Per, yeah. per brew. Um, and uh, yeah, it, the brewery distributed Lambic directly to cafes as well as, uh, of course, Goes and Creek. Perfect. And, and now, no other beers. No other beers. Okay. And now uh, you are reopening the brewery and you are, you are thinking to continue to produce spontaneous fermentation, right? Yeah. So the obviously, if you do Lambics, and you want to make goods, you have like a three or four year lead time. <laughs> uh, so yes, the, the long-term project is to renew uh, Lambic and Goes. Um, meanwhile, of course, to kind of keep things afloat, we have a few regular beers. Uh, so we have a Saison and an uh, IPA, and we're going to have be bringing out an Amber uh, now for the end of this year. Uh, but the long-term project is indeed to do uh, the, actually the Goes, because we're, we're bringing the Lambic, but... I think the lambic will will serve to blend goes uh, rather than send, sell lambic straight out. Okay, and when the because you need at least three or four years to start to make eau de goes. Yes. And uh, in in this time, for example, you you 
continue to do some other kind of beer styles. And when you have your own goods on uh, on Lambic for I don't know for five six years from here, you will stop to do these kinds of beers. Ale, a Belgian normal ale uh, beers. Well, we'll see. I I believe that we're going to be a hybrid brewery for at least uh, okay. a good period of time, uh, especially since the, the the Lambic volumes will be quite low in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think the idea is to have a let's say two or three kind of regular beers that we want to keep for a long period of time, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, develop progressively further the the lambic drive beers. I think that's that will be the, the normal mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. for the so to produce the lambics. And another question is, uh, when the Brasserie Timmons closed the doors at the past? Yeah, when? Which year? 1970. 1970. So the last kind of brew year was 67, 68. Um, but uh, let's say the, the with the aging and ri ripening of uh, the lambic, the last uh, barrels mm -hmm. kind of left the brewery in 1970. Mm -hmm. um, the heyday of the brewery was really like in the 50s, because that's when there were the most employees, uh, when it was kind of like the the biggest volumes. Um, and actually, in the um, yeah, in the 60s is when it's when started things began started to become uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, I. I would say part of the part of the the reason it closed down was my grandfather was reaching retirement age, so ah. he was retiring, and his two sons, um, I think, realized it would be very difficult to maintain two households uh, with the activity of one brewery in this location. Because of course, Jets, you know, when when it first started out in the early 1900s, this place was kind of like the suburbs. Uh, whereas ah. now it's completely urban. Okay, right? okay. The suburbs so, from Brussels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my grandfather would you would used time. to tell us that he would go cross the cross the you know the fields uh, you know uh, of of the the local uh, farmers to go play football in Molenbeek. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, it's uh, it, it was kind of like there was more open space, but now it's really become an urban space. We're we're in a mixed neighborhood, so it's kind of like mixed residential and business, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still. Still, uh, yeah, now it's really an, an, urban, an urban environment. Great. And I saw some old plates, some, some old footage from the, the brewery in the past. You maintain a lot of things from the brewery uh, from the past, some other plates, another machineries, uh, uh, something like that, or everything you have here is like uh, from your own part. And your ah, so uh, the equipment is, is exclusively uh, new. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are some old brewery paraphernalia uh, that we have available. Uh, like old uh, coasters, old bottles, oh. uh, like uh, stuff like this, like old crates. Um, but but the equipment itself is all new. Yes. Perfect. perfect. Yeah. And the equipment, uh, your batch for now is how much? For per this batch? is a 10 hecto batch. 10 hecto. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So modest uh, one twelfth of the original mm -hmm. size. <laughs> and I think it's also adapted to the environment. So I think... Uh, viewing the space, viewing the environment, 10 to 20 hectares is kind of like the proper uh, level at which to produce. Uh, mm -hmm. Above that, we would have to, uh, you know, relocate to a different area. Of course. Uh, and I think the idea was, the pride was to kind of be on the same location as okay. the original family brewery. Uh, and we're in a smaller place. So the, like the, the, the building that was the beer warehouse is now a cultural center, which is right next door. Ah. So we have sometimes events held there. Um, but it's a cultural center, and so, uh, and in fact, our barrel room is now only the, the um, let's say, uh, the cellar of the, the beer warehouse. And you have to imagine, when we're in the cellar, that actually all the levels, you know, up to four levels, were being filled with barrels, barrels. and now we have only the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes. We're, so it's adapted yes. to, to the space we have available. Okay, and uh, when was your first batch to produce Lambic? We did, uh, so we were, we're now entering our third season of mm. Lambic. So third season means we're getting there. Yes, <laughs> great, great news. Uh, so we, we did our first batches in, uh, so now we're 23, 24. We had um, 22, 23 and we had 21, 22. Perfect. Yeah. And you already released some product uh, from the, your spontaneous, spontaneous fermentation? Nothing yet. Nothing yet, no. even a, a, a normal goose. No, even a no. lambic of two years. Anything. No, 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 no. We have you not are, released. We are waiting for do the Audegus. Yes, we're going to do the. So now it's called Audegus, but of course back in the day it was just called Goose. Goose. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, I think the idea is to release it, uh, you know, conform to what the brewery used to do, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't mean that we might not explore uh, lambic blends with other beers. But um, but actually, for the the lambic and gers, we would really go for uh, the, the you know the one two three year blend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you expect it next year or maybe in, in a next, year from now? A year we, from now, yeah, next If year. things go well, knock on wood. Yeah, Luckily, yeah. I have some. Uh, uh, then uh, we should indeed uh, have a first blend. Uh, but it's all pending. You know, is everything okay? Um, from 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 what we can tell, things are evolving in the correct way. But you know, in these things, you never know. After you the can COVID, just, we, you, you can, can just guide everything. Yes, you can just. Yes. I mean, for the beer, you can guide the beer, but you can never tell where it's going to end up mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. it's there. So yes, and. <clears throat> You have some AO products, Belgian AO products, and uh, we can already find your beers around here, the, the city, yes. Brussels, something like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so, so we have a few stores uh, in the area, a um, few cafes, uh, but indeed we're, we're selling locally also directly mm -hmm. to consumers. Um, and I would say we've decided also not to kind of like ramp up production in an exponential way, mm -hmm. but kind of like in a very slow, progressive uh, way, because we want to, you know, um, uh, have a good understanding of each step. Naturally um, understanding. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I, I think what we've reached now is we have a good understanding of, of the, how the, Process is working, you know, there's also packaging, which is, which is also something you need to master. Uh, and then uh, getting our name out there. And so now we, we've, we've, we've done an, a grand opening in March. Uh, we're doing uh, openings on a, on a regular basis here. Uh, but so locally, it's, it's possible to find it in some independent stores. And, you, and, and we can uh, find cafes. only in bottles or in keg too? For the moment, only in bottles. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you have another five... Brothers, yep. they are your partner here in law. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And uh, and okay, they are they they cultivate the same passion for lambic from the beer that you are. You yeah, I mean, it? I I think um, well, I'm not going to say that we're that there are six clones of us, right? We're mm -hmm. obviously six uh, very different people, um, and I think we all have a different view of it. So for some, it's more. The family pride uh, for others more really kind of like the beer itself. Uh, others are really interested more in the business, business side. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, I would say, but the, uh, we each have our little kind of like aspect that we're taking care of, uh, and so some are in more on the business side. Some are love the accounting side, so good. Okay. Some are also interested in the legal side, you know, and copyright and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, others are just love the website, um, and then others are really you know passionate about you know working with the process and obtaining the, uh, the 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 product and i think part of it is also we we were like okay we have a brewing history and so we're not going to launch our project by brewing elsewhere we want to have everything here perfect we want to have really we want to be able to say amazing. okay we've brewed everything ourselves and we've kind of like you know uh, stay true to our to, to our heritage in the sense that we're re it. really brewing uh in our own facility mm -hmm. our own beer uh, congratulations for yeah. that because th that's the right way to renew uh reborn a brand that it's, was lost. it takes takes more time yeah, i know <laughs> and it's slower but it's it's i think the process is more fulfilling okay yeah. and jean-marc uh, another question is this is your main job now no. Wow. Okay. No, this is all side gigs. All side gigs. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. No, so. no, but that, I think part of the reason why it was feasible is that there are six of us, um, and we can all uh, take time aside uh, from what we usually do, uh, and that's enough to kind of like keep keep it going. Mm -hmm. um, some some of us are are partially here. I mean, mm -hmm. we're doing this part time. Uh, and it might evolve in the future, uh, but, it, but it's true that if at one point we're going to have to make a decision and uh, either, well, likely hire people and, uh, you know, invest a little bit more time once, once things really get going. Uh, but it's all uh, indeed kind of like uh, a secondary project. Uh, great. Yeah. I, I hope when uh, this time arrives, I am... Um, Crossing my fingers <laughs> to you to choose the brewery <laughs> and to growing up and, good, and make great lambics as uh -huh. a, as an appassionate about lambics uh -huh. and um, uh, just a historical cultural question: Do you have any Eau de Goose 
old bottle in your cellar from the past and the times? So there are a few bottles left over Whoa. from uh, my grandfather. Uh, I think we open one like every two years. Really? Still uh, good? From, so, from, from 70s? Uh, the last, uh, last one we opened was still a bit fizzy. Uh -huh. And but quite oxidized. Okay. So, uh, but it was it was uh, you know it, it, we didn't have to throw it out, so we, we could. We, no, uh, we never. Could, if you throw yeah. out, please call me. I come yeah, from yeah. Brazil just for that. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we, we we have a few left over, but it's it's uh, yeah just just a handful. Um, I think it's it's re now it's really like past the really way past the prime over fifty years. So. Just for the experience <laughs> yeah. to open a bottle yeah, from the seventies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, well, here's the the the, uh, the first part of the brewery. This is where the brewing would start. Uh, we have a hot liquor tank, a mash tun, and then a boiling copper. Uh, this is a British produced brewery brew house, uh, ten hectoliters. Um, this is kind of like a, an isolated mash tun, so we ramp up the temperatures using the hot water and without having internal heating in the mash. And then we have the, the, the hot liquor tank. When we're doing um, uh, Lambic, uh, we, we kind of have to play a little bit with uh, some of the, 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 the pulled work first that we start heating up and then we put it back in here before we collect the rest. Uh, but that allows us to do the mash, the, let's say the, the turbid mash. Once we have uh, the wort boiled, we have a double possibility. Either uh, we go to the heat exchanger and then we can um, essentially have our regular beer. So if we're doing a, a let's say conventional beer, we'll, we'll go to the heat exchanger and do our saison or our IPA. And now we have an amber on going. Uh, but if we, ha we have like a bypass, so if we, if we want to uh, have the Lambic, we're gonna, uh, you know, pump the, the hot lambic straight into um, into our uh, cool ship upstairs, and we have a bypass here. So that bypass will then have us go through this opening in the <laughs> in the ceiling. Yeah. So we can go up to the cool ship room. <laughs> As you can see, the, this area we have a grain storage. We also have like a bottle storage, and then this room is kind of like a closed space that we you you know designed to hold the cool ships and to have like a good flow of air. So we have here uh, essentially kind of like semi homemade cool ships. These are transport tanks that have been you know basically kind of um, chopped off the top, uh, refurbished. And so we were able to here cool down a thousand liters. We could cool down a little bit more, but for the moment it's a thousand liters. And um, uh, basically we have two air, you know, passages, two vents, which allow air to come in. Uh, and then we have there like air being sucked out. So we, we have a good circulation of the outside air to the inside. Um, and therefore we, we, and we have like a, you know, what you might expect overnight cooling down. Uh, and this is the environment in which we have the inoculation. Uh, and we wanted it here because that's like one of the, I think, most beautiful aspects of the building, this, this old stained glass window uh, that we were, you know, um, it's one of the only kind of like little special things about this building. Uh, and this was kind of like the obvious place for us to put the cool ships. Uh, and also from here, we have a straight shot up from the brew house or downstairs, and we also have a straight shot down to the cellar. So we can, we can through gravity, uh, allow the, 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 the cooled word to go down to the cellar. Shall we, uh, yeah, shall we go to check the barrel out some barrels? from the first season of 21-22 uh, back there and over here some of the, se the season 2, 22-23 um, and the these barrels, barrels were um, basically from a, a barrel uh, vendor uh, in France and they, they, they will kind of like refurbish uh, used barrels. Of course these are all uh, second used barrels from originally wine which is, which is uh, exactly what, what the traditionally was used the, 
the, the Brussels Brewers and certainly Timmins uh, Brewery uh, was using second use wine barrels bought from uh, you know basically with um, uh, wine producers. Yeah, and we we were able to get these from uh, a barrel vendor who who has refurbished these barrels from from wine uh, wine producers. And so yeah, here we're in the cellar of the original um, uh, beer warehouse. And so the beer warehouse was a brick floor. And what you can see here is that the, the bricks were organized in such a way that there was kind of like a central uh, you know, um, gutter. Not exactly like a deep gutter, but something that allowed the liquid to flow away. Uh, and so you'd have, you also have like these, these vaulted uh, brick ceilings, uh, you know, the, the, the cast iron pillars. This is very tr traditional uh, kind of uh, building, industrial building from the early 1900s. And this is what it looked like. This is a picture of the barrels being stored previously. Uh, so you have different levels. So this is an image we're trying to reproduce, but as you can see, we still have to produce a little bit more to get that doing. <laughs> with the time, with the time. With the time, yeah. Uh, and so in terms, you asked about the equipment. So here, here's some of the some of the old equipment back there. Some of some of the skids. Uh, quite a bit of the barrels are, are, uh, are uh, resting are the original skids. So th those are like some, one of the few things that are maybe originally from the old brewery. Uh, these are also uh, brewery doors that were um, in, in the old brewery that used kind of like wine and balls here. Um, yeah, so 16 then, barrels, right? You said 60? One six. One six, yeah. Cafes, for instance, you, the, the cafe would take this barrel and then you'd fill, it would fill that. And it, it was also like this the rectangular opening where you, where you have like this, this kind of like rectangular piece of wood that, that comes in there with the, the, gate, the gauze type uh, cloth or something. Um, yeah, they were numbered. And there was also here timons on, the, on, on that part. This was the family house. And then through this door, mm -hmm. you would go through with you uh, to the back, to the, to which to was the where the, the brew building, house uh -huh. was. Uh, the brew house was here. So we, we're in the building here, mm -hmm. and the, across the street was the mm -hmm. was this house with the brew house in the back, mm -hmm. and then and the malting uh, facility. There was like a, a big chimney, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but that was those those were taken down. So those those uh, those buildings. So the brew house building. Malthouse does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the original uh, name was Brasserie Malterie Timons mm -hmm. or Braure Malterie Timons. Uh, at the peak, there were maybe 15 employees. 50? 15. 15. 15. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm glad to, it's nice to kind of welcome uh, you all here.